Yeah, well, welcome. Uh, first day, first official day of practice, obviously, uh, with the four hours a week that you can work with them. And in the summer, it's, big, it's a big change from last year. Uh, you know, we're, compared to last year, we're so far ahead in, you know, what we've been able to put in and, and uh, just the relationships uh, that we've developed with the guys. And uh, it's been really good. I mean, really good. Uh, I, I love the work ethic of the team, the athleticism, uh, the talent, um, camaraderie, all good, all good. These kids have been uh, great to work with, and uh, we're excited about, about, about the whole season. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's tremendous. My staff's done a good job. I think uh, the plan that we discussed in the spring that eventually was born into fruition in June uh, has worked out tremendously uh, in all aspects for our program. And uh, uh, so, good. Uh, we're, Joey is, has a minor injury that's kept him out for about four days. Uh, he's had a great summer in, in uh, September, though, and he knows he knows what we're doing. So uh, we're you know we're going to be cautious in how we bring him in. But he'll, he should be back by next week, uh, hopefully. Uh, Big day for my wife and I yesterday. We got our uh, uh, our boosters in one arm and our flu shot in the other. So uh, double dose, and uh, and we're you know, we both feel great and obviously thankful to Duke that they uh, they take such good care of their uh, of their people. So I'm open up for questions. Uh, anything you would like to ask? Raise your hand if you have a question. We'll get a mic to you. Uh, we'll start with and there are no St. Louis Cardinal questions <laughs> at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, at all. At all. At all. The last three weeks have been nauseating. It's completely nauseating. Aaron first, and then we'll go to Steve next. Hey, hey Mike. Um, with with a guy like Paulo Banchero's ta ta uh, talents all over the court, how do you envision deploying him to take advantage of his skill set and size? Well, he has to still learn how to use his skill set and size in this, uh, in this, it's a new venue, it's a new environment, and he's learning how to do that. The fact that his versatility is tremendous, and we've had a lot of success in the past, in actually the past well, almost three decades or more, of using a very versatile bid uh, in different parts of the court, and he can do that. He's smart and uh, easy to play with. He just, you know, again, he, he still has things to do before he'll, you know, meets up to what I want him to do. But he's he, he's really progressing well and a great kid to coach. Steve, okay, let's take it back. Um, back for it. How do you see it played out defensively? What are their strengths so far? I would assess that that area. Yeah, and you know, uh, just since it's my 47th year, I, I, I don't like to call them backcourt or post or whatever, I call them basketball players. And uh, uh, we have really good depth on the perimeter. And uh, uh, to, there's veteran depth there. I mean, Wendell has had a sensational summer and, and fall. Not a good one, a sensational one. And Jeremy is so much more athletic. Joey's been good. Uh, and then when you add uh, Trevor Keels, is is an outstanding player. AJ, you know, there's and Jalen has has become a really good role player. We have a lot of depth, and to where you would even play that four of them at at, at one time. If Paolo's out, you could play four with a big. Brendan and then Chris. With, with you not being out on the road this summer, getting to spend more time with the guys, how much more teaching has that enabled you to do? And, and how, how helpful do you think that's been already for some of the young guys compared No, to it's been great. First of all, it's been great for me. I mean, that's the thing I like most about uh, coaching is developing the relationships with the guys. And as much as enjoyable it is to, you know, to 
uh, watch an AAU tournament on Sunday afternoon in, somewhere in the United States. Uh, I would prefer uh, to be on the court with, uh, with my guys. And that, that's part of the plan uh, that we've had is for my guys to just hit the road like crazy. And, uh, and then I would take care of stuff here. And they, they did too. It's not like they weren't here. But where they had complete, whatever they felt they needed to do recruiting-wise to do it. And then, uh, you know, we're good with what's going on here. But it's just such, you know, Brendan, it's, it's completely different from last year, the relationship aspect of it. And it's nothing against those kids last year. Uh, you know, I've loved this summer. Actually, my wife said, why'd you do this like 10 years ago? <laughs> and uh, I said, retire? And she said, no. The, and I said, well, I don't know if it would work out like that every year. But uh, it's working out pretty good this year. But we will not have a chance to revisit those past 10 years. Go to the left side of Chris. Hi, Coach. Um, I wanted to know about Theo John and how he's fitting in since, especially he came from people uh, with house uh, moving course was here with you. And how's he been in with everybody being a leader and fitting with the plenty of style? Yeah, Theo, thank you. Theo has done great. You know, um, one, you know, he played for Wojo, and so he knows how to play. And he was uh, one of the top defenders in the, in the Big East last year and uh, can really protect the basket, defend the ball screen. And he's a man. You know, he's a man. You know, he and, and having Bates Jones, you know, they're 23 years old. They've been in outstanding programs, you know, playing for Wojo or Bob McKillop. Even though Bates was a role player for Bob, he, he knows what it is to come to work every day. And they have fit in so well. And they've helped our They've helped, I, I thought our freshmen, I think our freshmen are more physically mature than they have been in the last uh, last year. And, uh, but their overall maturity has been helped by being with those guys and having limited guys, you know, we, we did not go into uh, numbers in, in uh, filling out our roster last year. We decided on those 10 guys. And so the only two transfers were uh, grad transfers, bigs, and even though a number of kids looked into our program, and, you know, asked us to recruit them, we didn't go there. We decided this is our group, and and then we scholarship since then two of our walk-ons, uh, Michael, my grandson Michael, and and Keenan Worthington, and for the, this next year. So we're just into the thing of less is more, and the commitment to one another, and let's go. Let's see what the hell happens uh, with all this. Are you with David? Okay. Um, I'm curious just over the summer how your relationship has uh, evolved with John and what's it been like to kind of let him in and uh, even more so and just kind of slowly hand the reins over to him. Well, you know, we, we've had a great relationship. You know, otherwise I wouldn't have recommended this plan. You know, John is ready and uh, I knew that when we put this whole thing together in the spring. And uh, yeah, he's a natural, uh, he's a great relationship builder and uh, hard worker. He, he's, he's got it, and, but so do my other guys. And uh, we have developed even more where when we have a staff meeting, a lot of times after the staff meeting, uh, the guy, like today, we had a practice, you know, we have a practice, so we had our a staff meeting to go over my practice plan, and then afterwards, we spend a few minutes together just talking about, here's what I'm thinking today, and, and that. And I, that runway of him being able to do that is really so important, and it's important for me, you know, uh, much better than if, all of a sudden, in April, I said, you know, see you guys. Uh, this, you know, if, if we did that, I, we wouldn't have the recruiting year we're having. You know, uh, and they did the next two recruiting years. Uh, doing it the way we're doing it. The, my guys have worked so hard on the road and in the visits and 
So we're, we're hand in hand, you know. Uh, uh, and I'll tell you what, a, a big a big key is, you know, my daughter Debbie, you know, in transition, because she's an assistant athletic director, but she has done so much with our program that she and John have developed an, an even more amazing relationship and some of the things that have to happen in making a program go. So uh, it's been great and uh, it's been great and I, I love <laughs> I love how well it, it's going. Right here to Matt. Hi coach, uh, you were asked earlier about having time to develop relationships with your players and you spoke about how different this year is. Given this being your final season, do you find yourself savoring moments differently? No, I, 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 yeah, I told my staff and everyone around me not to use the word last. Uh, you know, this is my 47th year, my 42nd year uh, at Duke. Uh, I'm going after it the way I've gone after every year. And uh, as soon as you start saying savor, you know, let's remember this thing or whatever, I think you, you open up the door for rationalization of, you know, not putting it all out. In other words, well, it might be okay not to do it to this level or whatever. And, and I, I know that th that can take place. So we're, we're not having any of it. Um, I'll savor uh, in May or whatever after that. But right now, I, I want to live, not savor. Like being in the moment is what I've tried to do my entire career. You know, in order to have the continuity of success that, of excellence that we've had, you can't savor much of anything. You better be in the moment that you're in. And you know, for the last four decades, you know, we've made an you know, we we've made uh, a mark on college basketball in the last four decades, and I'd like to make a, another mark before I before I leave in this decade. Uh, to the back of the Sasha. Hi, Coach. Um, can you speak a little bit about the role of family in your career? I can't see. Oh, there you are. All right. Here. Can you speak a little bit about the role of family in your career and balancing, you know, being a coach at such a high-profile program and being a dad and family Yeah, it's been pretty easy, really, because of my family. You know, uh, you know, when we got in, I, we, Mickey and I got in when I was 28. And you know, the five years we were at West Point, we were laying rugs, painting bleachers, having cadets at our house every weekend. Uh, we were all in. And Debbie was in, in middle, uh, not middle school, in grade school then. Uh, so they were accustomed to always having guys around. And it's, it's always been, you know, for the two of us, our, our career. And, uh, and then my daughters have blended in really, uh, really well. I mean, and, and Debbie was young, real young. I mean, when they used to have the Super 8 projectors, I'd be home watching and, you know, she would watch film with me and then at the end I'd do all those figures on the wall. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, my daughters know the game and they know the guys playing the game and my, my wife does too so it's been it's been really it's been easy it, for us it's been very easy and I will mention one more thing when Tom Butters got blessed and hired me he he mentioned to Mickey he said I just want you to know I'm not hiring your husband I'm hiring your family you know uh, and that was a, a, a really big time thing to say to a 33, 34 year old couple uh, that's getting ready to make a real big jump into into the ACC. Jim? Hi, Mike. Uh, uh, you mentioned earlier that you don't think of front court players or basketball players, or back court players, just basketball players. That seems to describe going down the work to a T. He's also played twice as many minutes in big uniform as anybody else on, on your roster. Is he your first home in life? I see you using him this year. Well, yeah, there, well, there aren't that many guys on our roster that have been, yeah, <laughs> yeah we have a turnover in roster like a lot of people, but, you know, Jim, I think he, he has become that older leader that we've had over the years. In other words, by going through 
the things you go through as a freshman and sophomore and, and learning how to be a player, learning how to be a Duke student, learning how to be a leader. He's benefited from not just uh, the successes he's had, but the times he's been knocked on his butt. The times that people have criticized him, and, and he's not the only one. I mean, people, you're not that good, or you, all those things that are said to somebody, and all of a sudden, the guy's good. I said, boy, I'm surprised. Well, you're surprised because you don't know it's a process. Uh, I mean, this doesn't, you, you don't get an app to be good. <laughs> you know, you, 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 have to, you have to earn being good. And he spent the spring changing his, his body and how he runs. Uh, he's taller now. He's a much better athlete. Uh, uh, I mean, he, I, I told him, I, I was getting some stuff done in the training room. He came in this morning and I said, you know, that dunk has gone viral. Now you're going to have to do that all the time. And he started laughing. I said, and I'm not going to be able to put the bucket at nine, nine feet anymore <laughs> just so you look good. And, that, and uh, he said, you really cook? And I said, yeah. And, uh, so it, I love my relationship with him. Like, he's our leader. And he's vocal. He's good. He's in a great, great place. I love where he's at. And I'm, a, I'm really anxious to see how, how it'll turn out for him this year. It really, he, he's one of the keys for our team because he's going to be uh, that leader. And yeah, they're a real close group. We have a real close, close group. They, they, they're, they've been fun to coach and they have fun. They work hard. They work really, really, really hard. Go to Luke next. Yeah, Mike. Um, you know, obviously, your plan with John on recruiting is sort of in. You've seen that the practice plan. What about in games? Will his role stay the same on the bench? Is that something you guys have talked about now? Is that something that could evolve? How do you see that? No, it's a good question, and it'll be pretty much the same. You know, uh, what what we have talked about, Luke, and we talk about every year, depending on who's on our staff and their level of experience, are scouts. Like who does the scouts, and um, and then how will we talk before a game, the the day before when we give it, uh, the 40 minutes before a game. So we're discussing that right now. So one thing we've made a decision on is like Chris Carroll and Nolan will split the scouts. John will watch over all of them, well, like how I would do, do it. And, uh, but how we sit and everything, I just want him on top of every team, not just on top of, you know, like the next, you know, the alternate op op opponent. And then, uh, but I let my guys talk a lot, so it, it, I benefited from them talking. And, uh, you know, they're really good with our guys. I. I where we sit in the game, I'm anxious because we'll actually be able to sit together, I think. You know, I, that was bad. It's just kind of like when you you make it to the Final Four and you have to sit on a stool. You know, and you're, I, I talk to my guys all the time during the game, and uh, so I'm anxious to have them close again. Would you consider, and maybe more, letting him sort of give him some options or decisions to make early in the year? No, I mean, he does. It, it, you know, he does already, and has. You know, he, he has. You know, just like in practice today, this is what we're doing. What do you guys think? And you know, we'll, we'll change. You know, like uh, that's why we talk during a, you know, during the course of the action of the game. And well, let, let's try this. Like we're actually going to do something a little bit different with our our guys today. Uh, that we, we talked about. So no, his his suggestions are have been there for for a while. And uh, but you know the other two guys are good too. Nolan and Chris are really. I got a, I've got an outstanding staff. Not a good one. Go here to Tom and then to JB. Uh, hey coach, over here. Uh, I got some early questions for you. Uh, talk about having him on your last schedule. And then I was wondering uh, what memories you have of going to the Army football game as a cadet, and is it on, is returning on your bucket list in retirement? I, I didn't get all the time. I'm talking about having Army basketball on your schedule. Army, yeah. And then your memories of the Army Navy football game as a cadet, and is it on your bucket list as a retirement? 
No, my bucket list and different bucket list. Uh, <laughs> nothing against that bucket list, but uh, I've been there. You know, so uh, I, I love them. You know, I talked to the soup last week. He, he, we're, he, he's supposed to be at a dinner that we we're at, but he had to cancel out. And uh, uh, it's going to be an honor to have Army here, especially, you know, it's Veterans Weekend, Veterans Day weekend. And uh, even as a cadet, I didn't go to every Army-Navy game. Uh, Coach Knight would have. Uh, we would go and scrimmage down in Philadelphia at Penn, and we'd scrimmage in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. And uh, we, we would not, uh, you know, I mean, I'll follow them like crazy. And, but uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with that. JV, back in the room. How you doing, Coach? Good to see you again as usual. I've got some hard questions for you. Um, the fans, Cameron, they crazy. The fans have played a huge part you know, of your career and your time here in Durham. Is there anything specific that you're looking forward to the most when it comes to the experience you know, with, with those fans being involved? No, just having them all back. I know they're, uh, they'll come out with the requirements of being vaccinated or masked, or you know, we'll, I'll wait until all the official work comes down at, at that time. You know, we have countdown to craziness in a few weeks, so you know, that'll be the, the first time. But, uh, you know, we're even having an event here October 9th that's not open to you, to, to you all uh, for our hospital. We do something with the Children's Hospital well, where they're able to sell, like, some tickets for 100 bucks a piece and bring some of the patients. And so we'll get a little bit of a run through uh, that one, but uh, no, it, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious just to get back to Cameron. You know, there's no place like it, and uh, that game day experience is uh, it's one of a kind. You know, and uh, for 46, for 41 of the 42 years, I will have had the opportunity of doing that. Last year, last year was bad. In, in that regard, because we didn't even have parents or anybody here. So a lot of times, I mean, it wasn't Cameron. It, it was, and so we need to find Cameron again. And the second part of my question, you know, I know I'm looking far ahead here, but has, has it crossed your mind yet? That final game actually? No, nah, no. Nah. I told you, I'm going to live in the moment. I, I, if I started thinking of that, I'd forget your question, because I'd be thinking of, I'm sorry, the, think of the last game, uh, you know, no, just, it won, that wouldn't be, I'm not going to do that, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, look, I'm 74, I'm going to live every moment I have, you know, and I don't have a bad wish for myself or anything, but, you know, I mean, that's how we've been successful in doing it that way, and uh, I do think that'll be a tough ticket. <laughs> uh, you know, we we actually uh, I host with my family the Jimmy V wine celebration in Napa. We've done it for 14 years, and uh, we had it this year again, and we raised the 12 to 13 million dollars. I mean, everyone, not me, but the first auction item was four tickets to you know that last game, Carolina game, and uh, it went for one million dollars. And, uh, and part of it is the people who did it just to say thank you for us. For but that was a nice. That was even better than a really good thank you note. You know, it was a uh, pretty pretty good thing. You know. To Matt. Hey, coach. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about Joey Baker and with him obviously being the last player of his recruiting class to come in. Can you talk a little bit about his growth as both a player? And yeah, I'm quite. Yeah, I don't. I'm, it's tough to keep track of recruiting classes. Uh, who's first, last in the middle, and whatever. But uh, in this day and age, uh, now it's tough for everybody uh, to do that. Uh, no, Joey's been terrific. I think uh, at times he's had injuries, like uh, that have hurt. Obviously, hurt him, but hurt him in developing a, uh, a substantive role uh, on the team. And uh, that's what I'm hoping he can get over this thing quick because he's had a really good 
really good summer. And he's, he's really shooting the ball well. And he's, all of our guys are more athletic. You know, Joey's more athletic than, than he has been. And uh, so hopefully he'll have a good one and stay healthy. Isaac? Hey, Coach. Um, I'm curious about the Supreme Court ruling on game position What would be the advice that you would give to your players on how to handle this new opportunity? Yeah, the name, image, image and likeness thing, I, I, th I think our athletic department's handled it great. Uh, Nina uh, has done a terrific job with that for all sports, and uh, along with uh, Todd, our, our new chief of staff. Uh, they're right on top of it. They, they brought people in to educate the coaches and the players about it, and uh, ours is going great. You know, the, the thing about ours is, is we respect the privacy of, of each player. So we're not, when, to me, when you hear people promoting what, what's happened, that's not in the best interest of the kid. It, it's in the best interest of your program, or at least you think it is. You know, uh, th these kids deserve uh, privacy in whatever, w whatever they do. And it all has to then be, uh, be fun, uh, channeled through our athletic department, so they get guidance along the way. And you know, again, I'm very, very uh, impressed with uh, what our what our uh, our leadership and athletic department's done with uh, with the NIL. I, 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 I'm big. I'm a big fan about it. Uh, although I, I think back almost 30 years ago. Uh, when Thomas Hill, Brian Davis, and those guys were here, Tony Lang, they used to be, along with the Carolina kids, they, they were able to work camps, speak at camps. You'd make 250, 300, 500, uh, whatever. And guys would make a, a good amount of money, and then they would learn how to speak. They would be missionaries for college basketball. And I think the Fab Five did it too. And, I think they did an autograph session one time, and people then said, well, that's not right for those kids to do all that. And they outlawed it. Not only that, was that was the time where they started limiting the number of hours we could work with them. It was almost like we were being punished. Imagine where we would be right now if that was the start of NIL. Because basically it was, right? And in other words, instead of going, if this is a graph from here to here, you would have this. Those are the things that I savor. You know, I savor like missed opportunities, and then, uh, and it makes me shake my head. Uh, so, but I've been a big proponent of it my whole career. Whatever you can do to help the kid is, is important. We have time for a couple more. We'll go to Royal, and then Aaron, and then Alex. Hello, Coach. Uh, recently, your all-time leading scorer, J.J. Reddick, announced his retirement from the NBA. Um, he had a bunch of five members here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Um, he had opposing coaches also say that he's one of the hardest coaches, um, hardest players to coach against, uh, game team against. Uh, do you have any fond memories, your best memory of J.J. Reddick? Okay. Okay. No, I got hundreds of memories. So. Uh, JJ uh, and, and JJ and I spoke. Uh, we speak frequently, but a couple days be he called me a couple days before he announced just to let me know and be reminisced. Uh, really, in the for our program for the four decades that I've been honored to be the coach for the ACC tournament, I'm not sure there's there's anybody in the history of any of, of the of the conference. That has more of, has had more of an impact on the four ACC tournaments that he was in. He literally won three of them for us. You know, against NC State, we were down by a lot, and he went nuts. Boston College was one of the most physical games ever played in the ACC championship, and he uh, he had shots that were crazy. And then the first time up in Maryland. Uh, we're playing Georgia Tech and all my guards fell out. Sheldon and Chad were bringing the ball up. We didn't know if we could score and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. And actually we had to think about a 
five point lead with under a minute to go. And, uh, he's right in front of our bench. And there's still about 25 seconds on the clock. We should hold the ball. And he fired it up and he goes, I said, that's all right. That's all right. Just get the ball back in your hands. You know, real, real quick. Now he loved every second of it. You know, he made, he made us look really good. Last two, Aaron, and then Alan. Uh, I wanted to ask about A.J. Griffin, the guy who you know, was recovering from an injury, long layoff. How have you kind of handled him with the ankle and then also the time away from the, the sport? Good question about, uh, with A.J., really, the injury, he's been really good. He's been with us now. Uh, he hasn't missed anything. Initially, he missed a little bit in July, but then he's been terrific. And uh, the main thing he has to overcome is not playing for a year and a half, two years. And he's had two outstanding weeks, uh, these last two weeks, where he, he's just getting it at a, at a really good level. So I'm, I'm very excited about where he might be a month from now. You know, where he is today is not where he's going to be a month from now. No. Uh, all his versatility earlier. I'm curious, what are your thoughts are specifically on his passing and playmaking? I, I can't hear what you said. Paulo's versatility and playmaking. Uh, he's got great potential in there. And uh, the, the, uh, he, he's learning how to uh, effectively use the dribble instead of dribbling. You know, and because and, uh, when you're dribbling, you can't pass. And, uh, and the defense moves a lot better. It's a lot easier to defend a dribbling team than a great passing team. Because you can move with the, with the ball on a dribble. It's tough to move as fast as a pass. And, uh, but he's got great potential there. And he, he's another kid who is working like crazy. He wants to be, he wants to be really good. All right, Coach, thank you very much. All right, Appreciate thank it. you all.